<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions for my answers? The motivations of uh, journalists is to get uh, news that are easily picked up or sensational news. Uh, there was an instance before that a dying soldier was uh, picked up in media and uh, it was broadcast. So as an organization, how do you address those type of uh, situations that are so sensational that it already affects the feelings of soldiers without really offending these uh, news organizations? Let's go back to the seas. You can be cooperative, but still be in control and on top of the situation. And that's why I said earlier, you have to establish control. How do you establish control? You set parameters, you set limits. There is nothing wrong with informing the media and briefing them that these types of coverage are unacceptable. And the reasons are this, and this, and this. And you should make them understand why not covering certain events, like the death of a soldier being shamelessly uh, broadcast as if something to feast on, should not be brought out uh, in the news. And make sure that uh, you are able to emphasize that this is not only for the personal interest of the family, but actually for the interest of the entire nation. Because the entire nation's uh, safety and security depend on our uniformed men. And we want our uniformed men to always have that high morale. And we do not want anything that will bring it, bring it down. So establish rules, establish parameters, make sure that they understand those who are covering it. Now, if you still feel that something bad was uh, committed against the organization, then as I said, we have resorts, uh, we have options to, to examine and uh, yeah, uh, assess in order to know our next course of action. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? I have a reward for those who will ask questions. Wait, give me a second. from Gina. You will remember me? The kitchen. You're most welcome. Question. Mom, may I request from you your opinion or views regarding the style or the relationship of our president to the press? And what is it and what is with he uh, in spite of all his attitudes or negative uh, actuations in front of the press, but still he is considered as one of the most favorite or one of the darling of the press nowadays. The press. If I am going to answer that as a media person, what I will say to you is you're asking a personal opinion from me. And it is not appropriate for my personal opinion to enter this conversation. <laughs> because can you imagine what these gentlemen and ladies will think? I'm sure they have their own opinions. No, I'm joking. I'm going to answer it. You know why? Because without necessarily revealing my personal uh, liking, the president, I think, is a whiff of fresh air. He's very blatant, he's very honest, too honest in fact, that uh, people just find it refreshing, being so used to, to lies. See, I told you, never lie. So people prefer that it be given out straight to them, no matter how hard and how painful it is sometimes to accept. This is the truth, this is how I see it. And that's my opinion, he's entitled to his opinion, and so they love him for it. They love him for it. And even in the United States, you would see that with Donald Trump. Saying things as they are, without necessary, without sugarcoating anything. It's, it's just a whiff of fresh air. And in this day of social media, we know for a fact that comments are actually without limits. And maybe millennials and young people find it so different that here is somebody who is in his 70s, but who is acting and behaving as if he were a millennial. Walang preno, walang pigil, walang control. So I think that's the reason his popularity is still up there with the media.
Well, we cannot say that for certain because we have not done a real survey. Remember that media persons do not promote the agenda of anyone. They're just out there to, to do their job. Next. Oh, your, your uh, koala. I have so many. <laughs> there might not be enough time for this. Yes? Next question, please. Uh, is it okay uh, during the live interview to bring with you a few cards or is it a big moon? Okay. Sometimes a person becomes so nervous, right? Just the thought of uh, talking in front of people, especially in front of the media, is so nerve-wracking. As I told you, even I, media person na ako, some, one day in the past, um, Cheche Lazaro of the Pro team called me up, called their office up and told me, I will be there in 30 minutes. I want you to discuss with me the sales process of your company. Talaga naman yung, yung heart ko, sabi ko, how will I face her? This is, after all, Cheche Lazaro. So, if you are that type of person who will not be able to speak anymore, if you don't have a guide, it's alright to bring with you notepad, uh, note, note cards, small note cards and index cards, for example, just as a security blanket. If you came prepared for the interview, it's okay to hold them here in your pocket or in front of you, but in reality, you should not be looking at them, right? If you prepared for the interview, and remember what I told you, preparation is key. You only have three key messages anyway to remember. There's no reason intelligent and brilliant gentlemen and ladies like you will not be able to put that in their minds. Because when you look at guides or, or cards, what, what do you think? If you keep on looking at cards, you can forgive that once or twice, but all throughout the interview, someone who is looking at a guide will not seem credible. And remember that your aim is to be credible, to sound credible, so that you represent your organization in the most worth, uh, worthwhile way. So, the answer is no. Please, <laughs> koala. Please, just feel free to come forward and choose even the color that you want. I was really hoping that you ran out of uh, the case that uh, the case would probably be in order, no? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I didn't get that. <laughs> I was hoping that he changed, uh, we ran out of key chains already so that the keys could be in order. <laughs> but do you think it would be nice to, instead of waiting, you you keep on approaching the media? Is there a negative implication to be the one to chase this media to, for the opportunity to send a message? Thank no. In fact, it's a very good point that you made there. Uh, it, it's always better to be proactive when you have, when you feel you have important information to share. That's how you build relationships with the media people. You reach out to them. The decision is not yours to make. They will be the ones to judge whether your item or your news is uh, newsworthy enough to be published. But the fact that you're reaching out to them already establishes a bridge between you and the media. So that in the future, when they are in need of information, they already have marked you as someone who is cooperative, someone who is willing to help, someone who is willing to assist in any way. So yes, be proactive. And as I said, it's always best to build a relationship when the, with the media when there's no crisis yet that has struck. And so, in answer to your question, be proactive. There's nothing wrong with changing the media. We used to do that. Sometimes they will print our story, sometimes they will not. But it's okay. It's like practice on your part. Practice on your key message points, practice on what is what it is that attracts them, what it is that they consider as newsworthy. Thank you, thank you. Most welcome. Uh, I believe that the media is an integral part of the society, but uh, why is it that most of their focus are on violence, tragedy? Most of the days they are uh, giving news about this uh, instead of uh, value formation uh, subjects. Why are the media focusing much on this uh, uh, violence? It is a sad reality, but, but that is what sales. 
these, after all, are still businesses. Just consider what has happened to Inquirer. Inquirer has uh, recently been bought by San Miguel Corporation, right? And um, so, many, so many people in social media, in Facebook, have voiced out regret that Inquirer allowed itself to be bought by a private uh, organization like San Miguel, which of course we know as one of the top corporations in the Philippines, but which also has implications on the stand now of the Inquirer as an independent and uh, yeah, autonomous uh, news organization. But you know what? Somebody, an editor from Inquirer, responded to all the comments in social media and said, when was the last time you bought a printed copy of the Inquirer? When was the last time you even checked out the digital copy of the Inquirer? When was the last time you sought out credible news writers? And so, because it is still primarily a business, these are considerations. We, we spoke about it earlier, that much as we do not like it, that's the reality, they want controversy, they want conflict, they want excitement. That's why it's a hard sell, for example, to, to uh, promote news uh, about charity events, about uh, new hires, uh, disgruntled, even disgruntled employees, because these things are not exciting. And that is why there is actually the idea is to produce a whole new generation of media people who will be keen to promote value. No matter, no matter how good you are, it will be difficult for you to penetrate if there's a rule that says only those who are able to build their names from being a reporter, yung natutong habuli ng aso in search and in, in, in pursuit of the news, will be respectable and respected enough to be airing out or, or reading the news, then it will be hard. So there are cultural agreements within the organization that are hard to break down unless there is a changing of the guards and unless there is a real change of heart. To really professionalize it. How about the uh, ethics in media? We have uh, ethics in media because we, the military, we uh, follow ethics. We, and that's what I'm, uh, I would like to hear from you. And that brings me to my second question is, what is the, in the context of freedom of the press? Because that is what uh, the media is always involved What is the magnitude or what is the, what do you, how do you define freedom of the press? Because sometimes, to the extent that they are already encroaching, because we are also human beings. So, uh, in some, just like we are fighting an unconventional war, we in the military have conventions, the laws, the parameters, but on the other side of the fence, it seems that they have no uh, really convention. Thank you. Okay. We, in UP at least, had a full course on ethics in journalism. We all know that, yes, uh, we have been taught these things. But again, sad, sad thing to say, it's not everyone practices what he is taught or what he has learned. Remember tomorrow what is supposed to be done when faced with, with difficult questions. But then, ethics, I believe, it's even commonsensical. Uh, you have a gut feel for what is right, you have a gut feel for what is wrong. The question is, do you allow yourself to be tempted the other way? Because there is always a price. There is always a price uh, in the opposite or direction of ethics. And so, yes, there, are eth there is ethics, but not everyone practices it. Just like in your organization, I'm sure, there are the majority or law-abiding, disciplined, worthwhile soldiers in uniform. But then what gets highlighted are those that are rotten and those who are not abiding by the ethics that was taught to them. Sorry, the second question. What is the magnitude of uh, freedom of the press? Okay. I think freedom of the press has evolved now with, uh, in the age of social and digital media when everyone can be a reporter. In fact, you need to be more careful now with what you say verbally, what you forward through your emails, because even a friend of yours or even just somebody sitting beside you can already be a citizen reporter. And we have seen this evolve in so many ways. Not only do uh, established broadcast stations and newspapers already have their own 
citizen agents who are acting like reporters and who are free to submit to them anything they, they catch. But uh, even social media, you can just you can just be anyone and have a YouTube channel and have your own uh, commentary and reports. And so we have to adapt. And that's why you need to be more careful. And that's why you have to exercise control all the time. And uh, these are things not easy to implement, but something that you can, you can do if you brainstorm among yourselves and uh, yeah, establish controls. Thank you, ma'am. And see you in Australia. Uh, are you going there? <laughs> how, do we, how do we put to task with the people who will just uh, also condemn you because he's just there and he owns the mic and he condemns you on national television? How would, how would uh, ordinary people like us be able to redeem our name? First of all, if it's any consolation, not all, be uh, not all people believe. Uh, every single broadcaster who is out there. I think people are wise enough and intelligent enough to uh, pick those who are credible and those who are not. Now, there are reputations that can be tarnished. Uh, we all know it's the hardest thing to rebuild. But if you build your relationship and if you build the strength of your reputation before any crisis strikes, as I said earlier, then you have much to bank on. Again, it might be unfair, but you always have courses of action to take. You can call uh, the studio and ask for your fair share of time. Now, if uh, that is not that that is not given uh, prefer uh, priority, you can reach out to other media organizations who might be more sympathetic, not to your cause, but uh, to the fairness that should be um, practiced by media. There are certain occasions when no matter how much you do, no matter how good you are, you will still not get a fair share or a fair, um, yeah, a fair share in media and because that is not fair. And that's why you will just have to do your part to control the messages that you send out there, to, to control the situation as much as you can control it, do the best that you can and hope that you are building enough goodwill so that later on, no matter what is said against you, people would naturally side with you. People would naturally believe in you. It's, it's hard, it's difficult, but it can't be done. Uh, one of the reasons uh, why we always hear, say, there's this continuing love-hate relationship between us and the media is that uh, sometimes, uh, because of the media's uh, uh, claim that it's the responsibility to to inform the people. We think sometimes they have become unwitting conduit to the messages sent out by terrorist groups or simply uh, uh, these resistant forces. But uh, is it proper or or probably how can we? Do we supposed to tell the media that uh, uh, they are already carrying the message of, let's say, the terrorist groups or the threat groups that are challenging the government? Okay. First of all, I would like to agree that the media are the conduit of, of any party. In fact, when you're talking to a reporter, he becomes your conduit to the, the people that you want to reach. Yes. And that's the same, and that's true for the other side as well. Remember, reporters are people. Reporters have biases. Reporters have their beliefs. And so you have to contend with that belief as well. If you believe, if you feel that uh, certain sectors of the media have been penetrated by terrorist groups, for example, or are being unwittingly, there's a question there. Are they intentionally doing it? Or are they just plainly ignorant and being unwittingly used? Then you have to be proactive and counter counter do your counter offense if you think the other party is getting to be more successful in their brainwashing or their brainstorming then maybe just maybe a regular interaction with the media a regular um yeah meetings with them would plant the seeds that would in inculcate in their minds your side of the story so that later on you know these are people pakikisama nila filipino ka Filipino din sila. If you are able to make them see the light of what you are doing, 
and how this will benefit the, the greater Philippine society, then those who are untainted, those who are still true and honest in their profession, in the exercise of their profession, cannot help but be swayed by you. Now, if they cannot, then that's a different story altogether. That means, yes, the terrorist group, other unsavory parties were able to tap certain media people to, for their cause. And even abroad, that's, that's similar. You can see that in the, the twist or, or the leaning of the stories being presented. Thank you. Kanina, binanggit ni Colonel Luna. Tagabulakan ako, buti binanggit niya. Kasi sa Bulacan, what is Bulacan associated for? Associated with, rather. Ha? Oh, pwede yung beautiful people. Palagay ko naman lahat ng region sa Philippines, ang gaganda at ang gagwapo natin. Ha? Di ba pinagbawal na ni President? Bulacan, I come from Bukawi. I came from Bukawi. I'm a native of Bukawi, which is famous for pagoda. The pagoda, fireworks, and firecrackers. And also, the bigger part of it is Bulacan. At kilala ang Bulacan sa mga Makata. Hindi, <laughs> madalihan ko kayong ginawa ng tula. On my way here, when I was wrecking my Uber cab. Hindi pa rin pa mababasak ko, kasi malapit na rin ang matakoy. Okay. Ha? Bago ko tapusin ang lecture at wakasan ang umagang ito, bayaan niyong mag-iwan ng tula para sa inyo, Class 62. Luba akong nagagalak sapagkat kayo'y nakasama. Di ko kayo malilimot sapagkat kayo ang nauna. Hangad ko na sa madaling panahon, kayong lahat ay maging mga general. Tagumpay niyo at karangalan, iyan ang aking magiging dasal. Sa angkin yung tapang at galing, ganda at kakisigan, puso ko'y namangha, walang salitang mapitawan. Bilang pasasalamat, bayaan na lamang na ako ay mag-alay ng isang saludo, tapat kong paghanga ang taglay. Paalam sa inyo, hanggang sa muling pagkikita, Kapag naharap sa media, ako sana ang inyong mahal. Salamat. Namin in behalf sa kalahati. Uh, in behalf of the Commander AFP TDC, General Aquino, and the Commandant of uh, AFP CJC, Colonel Balisirina, we would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts and also from the CJC classes and all other officers of the command. Uh, we would like to present a simple memento, foldable refrigerator with our driver. Just kidding. Just a simple memento. Dismissed. <laughs>